Hey friends, this is Quest and Current, and today we're going to take a look at those four USB C adapters, namely those two male to male or plug to plug, and those two female to female or socket to socket adapters. And so we can actually get started, and I'm going to interest you in what is actually happening. Those two are actually supported and are officially used by the USB Interest Foundation and they can be built like this just due to the fact that they practically are really short USB-C cables and those two are not officially supported by the USB Interest Foundation and should not be used and should not be built like that. And to know why I'm going to disassemble all four of them and then going to show you. So one second, that's then disassembled. And if you want to know how to do it yourself, it's actually quite easy. So due to the fact that the PCB with the connectors on top is actually just molded into this plastic and like this, I can push it in um, the way it was before. And to get it out of the shell, you actually just have to give it a slight punch with a hammer and then it slides right out. And then you use a pair of pliers to cut it free. And then you have the PCB or the printed circuit board with the connectors on top. And to explain a bit about the, the connectors and the USB board itself, we're going to take a look at one of them. And <coughs> I will first start with the easiest one, the plug-to-plug -plug USB C connector. And what we can see, it's just a regular printed circuit board with no components on it beside the two connectors. And some of the connections are routed straight through and some of them are actually crossed out. So the ones that are routed straight through are, for example, the VBUS on the ground connections, and the ones that are crossed out, as you can see uh, with the trace over here, are, for example, the CC1 and CC2 pin, or the SBU1 and SBU2 pins, as well as the data pins, to be compatible with a regular USB-C cable that should be a bit longer than that. So this connector um, on the shell actually says let me take a look. That's it's a 3.1 type C, 10 gigabits per second. So that's USB 3.1 with a maximum data rate of 10 gigabits per second. This means that at least one of the RX uh, TX or RX1 TX1, RX2 TX2 pairs should be connected. And if we take a look at the pinout of the connector, I can see that actually I think both of them are connected. So this should work well above. Uh, USB 3.1 speeds, it is just missing one crucial component. And the crucial component we can actually see on this connector, if we take a look, we can immediately see that there are some components on it. And that's due to the fact that this adapter or connector or really short USB-C cable is actually advertised as a USB 4 cable with 40 gigabits per second data rate, which means that it has to be a cable with some active electronics inside. And this active electronics is, well, let me turn it around so we can both take a look, is actually this chip. And this IC, this integrated circuit, is uh, responsible for advertising this connector as um, a USB power delivery capable um, cable or connector or whatever adapter. And the three, no, four capacitors around that are su the supporting components for it to be actually able to talk to your phone or laptop or charger or whatever it is connected to. This means that if we connect this to a cable tester, we should actually see it advertising itself as something. And we're going to take a look at that afterwards. So with the second um, supposedly used before 40 gigabits per second adapter that we have here, which is a female to female one or plug to plug, uh, no, socket to socket run, sorry. Uh, we can connect both of them together like this. And this is actually not supported by an official USB um, definition. And you can see that it's also missing this integrated circuit or this chip. So it cannot actually advertise, uh, advertise itself as anything at all. Which means that if we connect this in between two cables, for example, or in between two devices, then this thing could actually be the limiting factor, even though it says it's a USB 4 at 40 gigabits per second, I think, yes. We don't actually know. It's not advertising itself as such. And for example, if we want to transmit any data or uh, power levels above the nominal 
um, USB definition and up to 240 watts, this could actually be a limiting factor. And in the worst case scenario, this could actually be dangerous. For example, if those traces are not rated to be used at 5 amps or ampere, they could actually get hot or worst case catch fire. So that's why connectors like this are not officially supported by the USB Interest Foundation. And this also means that, for example, USB extension leads are not supported in anything that's similar to that. But we're going to use one in a second so I can show you. The other two um, are quite similar. So this socket to socket adapter uses the same variant or variation where you have some of the connections routed straight through and some of them crossed out to be compatible with regular cables and regular sockets. And the fourth one that we already know is pretty much identical. So now we're going to take a look at the one connector or the one really short cable that's actually interesting for us and going to test it and take a look what's inside the cable itself. Here we are. So I brought in one USB extension cable that we can actually use to connect this to our USB-C cable tester. And just so we know, this cable tester can t test the cable for continuity and can actually do some USB power delivery negotiations. So to be able to do that, I'm going to connect this bare bone adapter uh, to the right hand side and use the adapter to be able to connect it to the left hand side so we can actually measure it. The adapter itself, that's a USB-C extension cord, is actually not supported by the uh, USB Interest Foundation or actually USB at all, which means that this also should not be built the way it is. And that's for a reason. And before I'm going to explain that, the a chip on side, inside or on top of this printed circuit board uh, actually advertised itself as a 40 gigabits per second cable, which is um, identical to the stuff that they wrote on that. So that's actually not too bad. And it funnily enough advertised itself as a 100 watt capable um, charging cable. The cable health is at 100%, so that's good enough. And if we take a look, we can see that it advertised itself as a 20 volts, 5 amps cable, and basically all of the connections are made. The only two that are not made are the data plus and data minus on the top side. That's for backwards compatibility as always to be able to connect it to regular USB-A connections. And if we take a look, we can see that um, besides basically all of the USB pins being connected and the rebus resistance being at 82 milliohms, which is quite high, but probably caused to the fact that we have an extra connector uh, in here. We can see that the adapter itself advertised itself as a passive cable with an actual vendor ID, so we could look that up into the in the database with a USB 4 Gen 3 um, USB standard and a latency of uh, smaller than one, 10 nanoseconds, so it should be um, shorter than one meter, which it definitely is. Again, Hardware software revisions both are zero, so this seems to be the first version they brought out or they just didn't actually bother to use it. And with this cable in mind, we now know that this is working. This can be used as a, a, a really short USB cable. It's not supposed to be used the way I'm using it right now, for example. So if we would be using it like this, so if we take a look at this right like that, we know that it looks like a USB-C to USB-C cable, but even though it advertises itself as being capable of um, transmitting 100 watts of power, we don't know if this extension cord can do so. So if we connect it and our device starts charging at 100 watts, that's probably not going to work. And with this, we also know why those female to female adapters are similar and why they should not be used because with this I can do it like that and I can use a male to male adapter uh, after that to connect it to a really long string of adapters and the device we're connecting it to will only recognize this part because this part has the, the active circuitry inside, has the active chip that tells okay I can handle this amount of current, this voltage and this data rate 
but they cannot actually see if this is capable of doing so, this is capable of doing so, or anything in, in between. And that's why it's generally not allowed and not officially certified to build an extension cord or a female-to-female -female adapter for USB-C. With this, I will leave you be, leave you thinking. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.